Let's talk some early bust candidates next on Fantasy Football Today in 5. Welcome to FFT in 5. I'm Chris Towers here with Adam Azer. And Adam, I, I know you're a an optimistic, bright, effervescent kind of personality, but I'm going to have to ask you to be a pessimist here. I'll try. We're talking 2023 early bus candidates. And look, the, the thing about bus candidates is it doesn't necessarily mean you don't like the player. It usually, at least for me, means I don't like the price I have to pay for the player. There's always a price I'm willing to pay for any player. The thing is right now, it's March 3rd as we're recording this. It's March 6th as you're listening to this. We don't know what the prices are going to be. So we're kind of guessing based on some limited data, some early mock drafts, but let's hear some of your bust candidates for the 2023 season. Yeah. First one for me is Najee Harris. So there was a, a listener only mock draft that we did on FFT last week. Yep. I was and just looking at that one. Yeah. He went in the third round and I think that's probably fine if he keeps getting all the work that he gets. But I'd like to see him lose a little weight. He gained weight going into last year. He also had a foot injury before the season started. There are reasons why he may have struggled. But also, he just got two years in the league now. He's not an explosive player. Mm -hmm. So I think Najee Harris really needs a lot of touches or a lot of touchdowns to be a third-round pick or, or better. And I'm worried that he could lose his job because he just hasn't been that good. If they add anyone, it could be, it could be trouble for him. He's already lost his third down roll. So I, I think Najee Harris is someone I don't want to pay up for. Round four, I would start considering him. That makes sense. I'm kind of in a similar boat with J Najee Harris. I don't dislike him, but yeah, third round. It just, I'm still looking for like difference makers. I'm looking for guys who could get to like the 18 points per game mark. And I just have a hard time seeing Najee get there without, you know, Ben Roethlisberger when he was a rookie throwing a ton of targets to him. He didn't have that role, like you said, last season. So I'm with you there, and, and I'm got probably going to be out on Javante Williams, who I believe also went in the third round of that one. We learned this week he that it's possible, I guess is the, the wording, he may not be ready for the start of the 2023 season as he comes back from that knee injury. It was a torn ACL, but there was also other meniscus and other ligament damage. So I just I worry that Javante Williams, I, I think a lot of people think he's a great player. I think he's probably more like a good player. He doesn't have the long breakaway speed like you talked about with, not, with, with Najee Harris. I'm not sure that Bar Broncos offense is going to be a ton better even with Sean Payton. So it's just I don't know if I buy Javante Williams coming off his injury being an impact player. Who's another bust you've got? Lamar Jackson for me, and I don't think you're going to agree. I uh, I just kind of over him. The last two years, if you, look at, <laughs> if you look at points per game and you take out a couple of games where he left super, super early, you're talking about a guy who's basically been a top five quarterback right around mm -hmm. five. Uh, the problem I have with him is that he's had some big weeks, 40 plus point weeks, and a lot of weeks where people, fantasy managers going, what is wrong with Lamar Jackson? Should mm -hmm. I bench Lamar Jackson? So I'm tired of the inconsistencies, and I just don't really love the offense. They just don't have that talented of an offense, and I, I just think they're not the explosive, great offense that they were a few years ago when they took everyone by surprise. Now he's learning a new system. Could this be the new system that, that gets him going again? I don't know. The last system he was in was tailor-made for him. It was like, hey, Greg Roman designed something for Lamar Jackson. Well, now he's got a new offensive coordinator. I don't know how he's going to react to that. You just never know. Sometimes there's a slow there's a learning curve so i think i'm going to be out on lamar jackson i know you don't love trevor lawrence so this is a good segue i would take trevor lawrence ahead of lamar jackson he'd be no higher than qb7 for me yeah i would definitely take lamar jackson over trevor lawrence but like like you're saying i mean you look at the game log really really massive start to the season looked like he was going to be an mvp candidate again i think the biggest thing for him is just the lack of talent around him because you saw when rashad bateman got hurt last season that was when lamar jackson really fell apart and you know, Rashad Bateman's had his own criticisms of the Ravens organization. I think that's a team that really needs to add a lot more talent around him. If they do, and I'm assuming that they'll add at least someone to the offense as a pass catcher, I think I'm going to be in on Lamar Jackson as a top five quarterback. Like you mentioned with Trevor Lawrence, I just, I don't know. I know he's a super talented player and, and he showed signs of improving and he did take a big step forward in year two, but it's also like he had 20 plus points in eight of his 18 games last season. And it was really like one five game stretch where he was incredible outside of that. He was a pretty mediocre fantasy option at best. Yeah. He should have Calvin Ridley next year. He's going to have a bunch of weapons. It's a good situation. I see all of that. I just, I don't know if I buy him, like people are going to be ranking him and drafting him as a top five quarterback. 
I can't do that. I couldn't take him ahead of Justin Herbert, who has shown that kind of upside, not over Lamar Jackson. So I just, I like Trevor Lawrence more as a low end wide receiver or QB one. I just worry he's going to get pushed up to be higher than that. I'll be one of the people pushing him up. I would take Herbert over him, but I think I have him fifth, uh, then Fields, then Jackson, um, which of course rankings are always changing, but Herbert's yeah. four for me. And I believe, I buy it. I just, I think for me with a young ascending player like that, I don't really look quite as much as at the game log. And I, I just more or less buy the narrative with him. And I do like Calvin Ridley, but I understand. I mean, he had sort of an overrated season. He averaged like 20 fantasy points per game. And, you know, it's it's the kind of thing where I think people view it as, well, he got better as the season went along. Kind of. Again, he had that five-game stretch, but you know, he had one great postseason game, wasn't very good against the Chiefs, was really bad to close out the season his last three games. So I just, I don't really know if he's there yet. My uh, last bus I'll just do real quick is uh, Debo Samuel. And uh, it's yep. just going to be a one Debo Samuel believer in every draft, I think. And it's not going to be me. He also went in the third round in the listener-only draft. He's a fifth-round guy for me. I think Trey Lance is going to start the season as the quarterback. So if you want to hear why I think Debo Samuel is a bust, please just listen to all of our preseason podcasts in 2022. Now, if they <laughs> trade uh, Brandon Ayuk, that would change. But Trey Lance plus George Kittle plus Brandon Ayuk plus Debo Samuel equals a lot of busts, except for maybe Trey Lance. Yeah, it's just a math problem for the 49ers offense. They got a lot of guys who are going to be very, very expensive in fantasy, and it's going to be tough for them all to live up to expectations. I agree with you. And Christian McCaffrey is probably the only guy I'd be willing to draft at cost. And even there, he's not my number one running back. I have Austin Eckler ranked ahead of him. So I'm going to be at least one spot lower than the consensus on <laughs> Christian McCaffrey. That's going to do it for FFT and five. Uh, for the bus, early bus for 2023. Join us tomorrow when Emory Hunt breaks down some combine standouts, and we'll see you then.